Hi there. Welcome to this week's episode of the podcast with me, Russell Davis. This week, we're looking at a sense of purpose. It sounds like a very grand subject, a big thing, having a sense of purpose. But I want to break it down, make it easier for people to find their sense of purpose. Because I think when we have a sense of purpose, it just transforms life. It creates a sense of meaning and motivation, some energy, some drive, a direction. So why is it we sometimes, or often, struggle to find a sense of purpose? Well, let's dive in and find out. Positive psychology defines three levels of happiness. The lowest level of happiness is a pleasurable life. I think for me, in my language, I use my clients and the psychology I bring to my work, that's like an outside in life. I'm okay when, I'm okay if. Chasing the next thing, the thing's going to bring happiness. But it's not genuine happiness because it's coming from the outside in. It's not really scratching the itch. It doesn't last long. So we limp from one pleasurable thing to the next. There's nothing wrong with having pleasurable things like the holidays or the new phone, the new car. But they're not lasting pleasure. They're not lasting pleasure. So it's the pleasurable life. The next level of happiness is what they define as a contented life. And for me, that's living more what I call inside out. Knowing your happiness is within you. The contentment's within you. Look at babies and toddlers. They're just happy to play with a box. They need for nothing. They find joy in the most simplest of things, in the simplest of moments, because it comes from within. It's not dependent on anything. It's an inside out process. And the more we see that, we more we connect to innate happiness and joy and contentment within us. And we still have hopes, dreams and desires and goals. There's nothing wrong with those things. We hold them more lightly. No, we don't need them to be content. We may just enjoy them along the way. So it's an inside outness, which is more of a contented life. Then it defines a third level of happiness, and that's a purposeful life. And then it's a contented life, but then work into something bigger than ourselves. A sense of purpose of what we're doing here in our time on earth. And I think there's a lot of benefits, as people can imagine, there's a lot of benefits from having a sense of purpose. Even in the look at intrinsic motivation, one of the key ingredients of intrinsic motivation is purpose, knowing why you're doing something. It gives us a a reason to get out of bed in the morning. A purpose is really powerful and motivating. And a lot of people are trying to find their purpose. I tried to find a purpose for many, many years. I was in a job in a corporate career, doing very well, but didn't find I had a sense of purpose. I remember Googling in the back days of still Google. I might have been Google, maybe it was Alta Vista or another search engine back then. I remember kind of searching how to find your purpose, expecting the wisdom of the internet to help me. Actually, to cut a long story short, it did. It led me towards an article by a coach who I still kind of work with, done some work with over the years and follow. He's changed his kind of psychology dramatically over the years. It led me to a guy called Michael Neal, who really has helped me in all sorts of ways over the years. But it led me to an article on his website about finding purpose. And I think sometimes we struggle to find purpose because we're looking for it, because it's trying too hard to find it. I've got a friend who's a coach. He used to do talks on how to find your purpose. He'd open the talk by saying, you come, you know, you're looking to find your purpose. And the reason you can't find your purpose is because you come to talks like this on how to find your purpose, as if it's some external thing you have to find, rather than being something that materializes for the within you, for within you. There's a old Sufi story of Nasruddin's donkey, where everyone was packing things up to go on a on a pilgrim 
to find God to Mecca. Everyone except Nazruddin, who just watched them, laving away, packing all their things. Soon all the village, the men, women and children, were heading out to Mecca. They were singing songs and shouting a great excitement about how they were off to find God. They got about a mile away when Nazruddin suddenly came riding up on his donkey, shouting about some terrible emergency. They called the donkey and made him tell him what the problem was. I'm trying to find my donkey. Where's my donkey? Why, Nazruddin? You're sitting on top of your donkey, answered the villagers. Oh, really? Is that so? And why are you going to f- on a pilgrimage to find God? And I think there's something in there about we search for a purpose as if it's some external thing, some external quest. We're going to find some gold chest and inside there's going to be a scroll with our purpose written on it. And I did that for many years, praying to God to tell me what he wants to do in my life. What's my purpose? I'll do anything. I'll serve him. I'll be a, a, a missionary, a youth worker, do anything. What's my purpose in life? What's my thing? I didn't get an answer. I didn't get an answer. And one of the reasons I didn't get an answer was I had such a busy mind. I learned to quiet a mind. I really felt I got an answer to that prayer. I really felt the God, the energy of life, answered that. And the answer I got was, just be you. Just be you. <laughs> that wasn't the answer I wanted. I was thinking at the time, well, what does that mean? If you tell me exactly what it is, give me the job description, then I, then I know I can't get it wrong. I can't get it wrong. But back then, I was made up by fear. I guess fear of judgment of wasting my life or doing the wrong thing. So I wanted clear instructions and I knew I couldn't get it wrong. But it was the right answer in many ways about just be you. Just be you. We have unique gifts, talents, passions. Be ourselves. But often that's drowned out by lots of noise of thought, insecure thinking about who we think we should be. Are we allowed to be that? Is it easy that? Do we deserve to do that? There are all sorts of stories and judgments that prevent us from actually being ourselves, being our true self, following our heart's desire, and letting that voice within guide us. Michael Neal, in fact, talks about how to find your soul's purpose is simply just ask yourself, what is it you want in this moment? In this moment, what is it you want? Maybe it's to go to the loop, have a drink, well, go and do that. Go and do that. Then ask yourself in the next moment, what is it you want in this moment? Because that same voice within that prompts us for the small stuff is the same voice within that prompts us for the big stuff. I'd lost sight of that. I lived my life so long about the life I thought I should be living, pleasing other people. I lost connection to my heart, my soul, about what I wanted. I had to read, learn to, to listen to that, to hear it, to trust it. There are plenty of things I do exercise with clients that may help them find their sense of purpose. But the first thing to do is clear that noise, the noise that drowns out that little voice within. First thing to do is reconnect them to that little voice within, their heart, their soul, to hear it and be able to trust it rather than dismiss it. Hear it and trust it. And give it a second thought rather than dismissing it. Rather than dismissing it. I mean, there are some exercises I do I find useful. There's a, a great book of Find Your Why. Simon Sinek wrote a fabulous book called Start With Why. How our purpose and why is so important in what we do. There's a follow-up book called Find Your Why. And a great practical exercise you can follow in that about finding your why. And it's about connecting to stories from the past, memories and stories that we hold on to for whatever reason could be big events, could be the most simplest of moments, conversation with someone, we just stick with us, we remember it. Had a conversation with a, a lady recently about this and about, she, she's a copywriter, and she said, oh, I, I struggle to, to have any memories from my childhood. And she started sharing back two or three memories, just instantly had this, is this. And straight away, from these two or three stories, I could see there's a thread, how she hated being told what to do. She wanted to be in flow, she hated to be living to other people's rules or, you know, banging her drum to their beat. She hated rules. And then she had an insight. That's what I like about copywriting. I hate the rules. It's not just about following rules. It's about connecting. It's about communicating. Sometimes you need to break the rules to communicate, to connect. 
She could see the sense of purpose behind her work she hadn't seen before. So connecting to the our, our stories from the past will resonate. There's often a pattern. There's a pattern. And that's this process of find your way, which you might enjoy to explore that. Or sometimes I ask a client what they craved psychologically as a child. And they may indicate what we want to bring into the world. There's another exercise I do with clients, looking at the overlap between what makes them angry in the world, what gets them shouting at the TV when they watch the news, what they're passionate about, things they loved in their life that would be a loss if they weren't in their life, or maybe there is a loss because it's not in their life. And, and what they're good at, what they're good at. When all three overlap, when all three are play, when we're doing something we enjoy and that we're good at, do something about that makes us angry in the world, then we feel like we're on purpose. We're on purpose. These are great exercises to do, but we need to let go of the noise. We need to be more connected to that little voice within that see through the illusion of the insecurity and fear that dismisses thoughts too quickly. Who did that? Couldn't possibly do that. That's not that. Now is our mind. And the more we allow to be ourselves in the small things, speak our truth in a meeting, wear what we want, be who we want to be, the more that sense of purpose comes within us. We realise it. It's not something you find. It's something you realise that comes from within you. So have fun sensing that little voice in the small things, in the everyday things, as well as the big things. That still soft voice within you is your North Star. It should guide you the way. It will point you the way, one breadcrumb at a time. We all have a sense of purpose. If you're struggling to find a sense of purpose, reach out. It's one of my favourite things to do is help people find their North Star. Because it brings so much more clarity, motivation, ease in decisions. It's where I think the juice of life really comes. Loving you.